Hey, and welcome back to Marketing Tutorials. In today's video, we're going to be diving in on how to generate more sales for your website, your e-commerce business um, through Google Ads. And Google Ads is a great tool, but if you've never used it before, don't worry, because in this video, we're going to go right from the start all the way up into setting up your advertisements. Now, there is a few things that you would technically need to know, um, especially if you've already set up your e-commerce website and you might need a little bit of an integration for Google Ads in order to be able to track all the sales properly. But other than that, nothing too complex. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is go to ads.google.com and this is where you can get started. If you have a Google Ads account already, perfect. If you don't have a Google Ads account, I highly suggest that you create one, super simple, and the creation of it is free, so you don't need any subscription. You only pay for the results that you get and for the advertisements that you actually put up to be on the internet, so you don't pay for anything else. But once you're already started, you get into this view right here. And once you're in this view, you are asked, what is your main advertising goal? If you've seen some of my previous videos, what we do right here is go past these options here, even though you have to get more website sales, and you switch right to expert mode down here on the screen. This just opens up another menu, which kind of has all of the same things except you can get a little more into detail of what exactly it is you want to do. Now, as you can see, the thing that we're talking about here today is how to generate more sales online, in-app, by phone, or in-store. So this works whether you have a website, whether you have an application for your website or for your business, or also if you want to get some purchases over the phone, if you want to encourage that. That's a little more traditional, so I'm not really going to get into details of that. We're going to, talk, we're going to be talking about mainly um, online on a website. Of course, if you want to see the video on how to get website traffic to your website, that's also available on the channel down below. So make sure to check out that video first if you just want to generate more people coming to your site. But if you actually want to focus on a more, I want to say, in-depth campaign, which is focusing on sales on your website, then this is the video for you. Speaking of uh, going to my channel, before we get any further, make sure to hit subscribe down below so you can see more videos upcoming and if you have any questions, leave them down below. I try to respond to as many comments as I can. And um, you'll also help me quite a bit with the algorithm. So give it a big thumbs up. Okay, so we're diving into the sales option right here. And as you're going to see, we're going to be asked what type of campaign that you want to create. You have a couple different ones that you can do. A search one, display one, and a smart one. This is entirely dependent on what kind of business you have and what your goals are. Now, let's review the couple of options. So, you have the search type of advertisements. If your business is not very visual based, meaning perhaps you're not selling clothing or you're not selling products that would visually appeal to people, you're selling more services, which you would need more details about what the service is, but you don't really have the right media to display for it, this is it right here. This would be the case of if you're running a consulting website and you want people to book a consulting session with you then that would be considered your sale, a booking of your session, and you would be more likely to do better with search results. That doesn't mean that if you have a website of a different sort, you wouldn't be able to use it. It's just based on my personal opinion and based on my experience. For the display ads, this is more for advertisements which have things like very cool visuals. This is if you want to target people who want to buy the specific shoes that you sell on your e-commerce website, so you want to show all the different models, the sizes. Um, it's really, really cool. And then you have the smart advertisements. Get website sales with automated ads that show on Google, Google Maps, and across the web. Google basically takes over a little bit of the pressure from you of deciding where you want to put your advertisements and decides for you. But this is more important for people that have businesses that are also, for example, a physical location and a website and an app and it sort of combines all of that together by encouraging people to visit your store in person or also to visit your website and to finally make that purchase. So for the purposes of today's video, we're just going to be going to the display advertisements. But of course, you can pick any one of these and the setup is not that much varied between all of them. So you don't have to be too concerned about that. Let's just dive right into the display advertisements. Down here, you're going to ask get asked what kind of um, campaign it wants to be. So a standard display campaign or a Gmail campaign. We're going with the standard one. Gmail campaigns, again, if 
you want me to make a video about this, leave that comment down below. I think it can be a whole separate type of setup that we need to do. Um, over here, you would be allowed to select your website, your business's website. Um, so since I don't have a business of my own at the moment, I'm going to do an advertisement for just a random company that I know exists. And we're going to base it off of that. So for example, I'm going to do advertisements today for Facebook. Why not? But here you would put your website. Again, I mentioned in the beginning that there is a little bit of integration that you would need to do with the Google Ads. And the integration at this point would be to make sure that the conversion action has been created for your account, which is a website sale. Now, this would be the way that Google can see if these advertisements actually led to people buying a product or service on your website, on your mobile application, wherever it is. And you would need to do this by looking at the installation options. So by installing the tracking code yourself into your e-commerce website, or by using the email instructions and sending it to your webmaster, whoever's running the website. I think a lot of people that watch these videos usually have a business themselves. So you would be doing the tracking code by yourself. But if you use e-commerce platform websites like Shopify, connecting your Google Ads account to your Shopify website is actually really simple and can be automated. So you don't really have to do any of this code stuff. You would just go into there and find a way or look at the applications available and install it. I'm sure that's the case for most of the e-commerce platforms. So see if you can do it the easier way. If not, you're gonna do it with installing the tracking code yourself. And then we continue on to the next part. So in the first part, we define what our business is and we define our tracking code, meaning, and I explained this already, it just means that Google can now see if this advertisement you're setting up was actually effective or not. That is all. And very simple to do, just a couple of steps. So now we're going into the setup of the ad itself, where we want to run it, the languages, and our budget. Again, this is all up to you, depending on what your business is. But we're going to name our campaign Facebook Purchases. Campaign naming, very important, just so you and your team can know to reflect back on which campaign did well. But you want to also use a name that's more descriptive, especially if you're planning on running multiple ones. You can pick which location you want your campaign to run in. And I think I'm going to choose all countries and territories. Of course, if you're running a more local business, you could run in your local space um, or in the country in which you function out of. And you have these more specific options, target people in, who show interest in, or um, are in your targeted locations. It's a recommended one and it would get you the more precise audience. Then you would choose the languages. Also very simple, up to you depending on what language that um, your business is in or that the audience you want to target probably uses Google stuff in. And what you want to focus on, you have the option of high quality traffic. And this is actually where you would be selecting conversion value, which is after you've set it up, you would be able to select a purchase right here. Now I can select it because I'm setting this up for Facebook, but then again, this won't change. So mine is going to be on high quality traffic, which means this is going to be a traffic campaign sending people to visit my website. Once you set up yours to the purchase of the conversion value here, that's what's going to say. The rest of the settings are going to be exactly the same. And we get to the budgets. Budgets, I also talk about them in pretty much every video. It is up to how much you want to experiment with and how much you are sure that you want to put into advertisements. This depends company to company, depends on how much you want to start with. But if it is your first time ever creating advertisements like this, I would suggest starting off with a lower budget and seeing how much a conversion on the Google Ads would cost you. So how much would it cost you for these advertisements to make one sale? And what's your profit on top of that? Maybe it costs way too much and you can't deal with those margins. So you don't want to do this anymore. That's why it's not a good idea to start off big. Start with small, see how the results are coming in, and then decide if you want to increase it or not. I'm just going to go ahead with a thousand bucks each day. This is uh, pretty unrealistic unless you're a huge corporation already. Um, we're just doing it for show purposes. And beautiful, we're getting into our advertisement groups. Ad groups are basically the subsequent of a campaign. 
uh, you can create multiple ad groups. One can be, for example, to target women, one can be to target men, one can be to target people in the US, one can be to target people in Germany. Just as an example, um, our specifically, we're just going to do, for example, okay, targeting men. Again, I think you should go with only one ad group in the beginning. Don't split it up this much, um, especially when you're just starting off. You want to do a very general one. So actually, we might even just change ours to say all people target. Then you get to decide what kind of audiences you want to reach. So this is quite interesting because here you have this tab called ideas, and this is suggested by Google for you, depending on what the contents of your website are. So since I put in facebook.com in the beginning, it's giving me Facebook related keywords and topics like Facebook marketplace, Facebook advertising, Facebook itself, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, for you, it might read your website and decide that these keywords are going to be something like shoes or the affinity audiences are going to be interested in shoes, interested in clothing, interested in consulting services, or you could browse for them for your audience by yourself and see based on the demographics that you believe that they would be in, what their interests and habits are, etc., etc. And again, auto creation, very cool to use, but I'm sure that you are all aware of who it is that you want to sell to. And since you are, you can find out or picture them with Google's tool. And this is how you would target who your advertisements get shown to. So we're just going to click done with that. Um, I mean, when I'm showing you how to set this up, basically, I want to show you the technical part of it. I want to give you as much advice as I can. But since I don't know your business personally, you can just ask down below again or reach out to me via email. And maybe I can help you figure out or together construct your audience setup. Other than that, uh, very much dependent on what your business is already and how much you know about it as the owner or marketing person working for it. So demographics, again, you can go into specifics. I'm going to skip it for now. And then we get to these settings here called targeting expansion. So increase your reach based on the positive targeting and settings selected above. Do you want more reach? or off. Now, you can reach more users by letting Google look for high-performing audiences similar to your target, um, and expanding their reach can increase impressions and clicks and conversions. What this basically means is that up here, we set up our audience, uh, which is people interested in Facebook and um, apps that they can use to find friends. And down here is how close to our audience do we want to go. Do we want to just show our advertisements to people exclusively in these audiences? Or do we want to show it to people that are maybe a little bit similar to these audiences based on their activities? Or do we want to show it to people that um, have maybe one touch point or have a touch point with someone that has a touch point like this? And this is why it's called targeting expansion. How far do you want to create this circle of people you're targeting? They say that you can get more clicks and perhaps more conversions, but it can also mean that just a lot of people are visiting your website, but not the right ones. Um, this I would keep to the way that it was set up originally, so have this little bit of expansion, but don't be too concerned about um, going too deep into this. This setting you can even just leave it off if you're not comfortable with um, making that decision right now. Again, I feel like, especially this type of campaign, there could be videos for every single step, and I don't want to make this video too long because we're already 13 minutes deep. So let's just leave it to the way that it was when we came here. Um, if you want have questions, reach out. All right, next up, app group bid. So enter your enhanced CPC bid for this app group. So this is if you want to uh, bid on how much each click on your advertisement should cost you. I suggest that you leave this empty and you don't select how much your cost per click should be because this could limit the reach of your advertisement. What I would suggest is after you've been running the advertisement, say for a week at your budget or for a couple of days, you can see how much Google is charging you um, for every time someone clicks on the advertisement to visit your web page. If that seems like too much to you, you can lower the cost per click, so the CPC right here. But lowering it could mean that less people are clicking and it could mean that your ad is less effective in the end when we look at the number of conversions that you get or the number of sales. So. For right now, I would leave it empty, but for future reference, I would 
You basically use the information that you get initially from the first advertisement and um, based on that decide if you need to lower it or increase it to get more visits and more sales. Really the whole um, goal of setting up campaigns is constantly testing and improving based on what you saw. There is no one-time winner and there is people that are going to try to sell you the concept that you can just have an advertisement and it's like you sell out everything. It's all about learning and resetting and redoing and take that from me as a person that does it every single day for their job. Okay, we're getting to the fun part. We're getting to create our ads. Now, this is where you can get creative with your images, logos, videos, the headlines that you would write for your advertisement. As you can see, you can see how they would look like on desktop or mobile. And um, okay, so let's say Facebook, login or sign up. Now you can see this becomes our headline. And then your description to 30 characters can be something like, it's quick and easy. Again, based on what your business is, based on what your images and logos are, based on what exactly is your selling point, you can get so creative here and you can look at the requirements for images, for example, and for videos on the Google page and see how long they need to be. Recommended would be to have up to five videos on YouTube, for example, that you can upload here and people would see your advertisements on YouTube. Um, you can go to fiverr.com and hire someone to make those for you, or you can do them yourself in Photoshop uh, or a tool like Canva which is also very cool. This is the creative stuff and this is all up to you. But once you do get to this point, you've already made your campaign and the next step is setting up the billing, which let's be real, you're not getting my credit card information. And that is how you can set up an advertisement to get actual sales on your website or application with Google Ads. Guys, I know that we may have skipped a few steps here and there um, because there are oddly specific and they are only specific to your actual type of business. So please let me know if this was clear enough. I honestly am just here to help you as much as I can, and I appreciate the feedback that I get in the comments below. Once again, subscribe, and see you in the next one.